videos I've already posted show the removal of this transmitter from a broadcast station in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. What was happening during its cleanup and moving it from the garage in here into the shack. The transmitter is finally complete and working and on the air on 160 meters on 1.885. I removed one of the 833PA tubes, so there's now just two 833s as modulators and one 833 is the RF output. The reason for this is I didn't need a thousand watts in amateur service. The transmitter originally used four 833 tubes. The only other tubes that are used in the transmitter are 807 tubes. There's 807s as audio drivers and buffers, IPAs, and an 807 that's used in the oscillator assembly that's located on the right side of the cabinet. The plate supplies on the bottom of the transmitter. You can see the gray high voltage transformer on the left, the high voltage filter choke on the right, an auto transformer that allows me to vary the primary of the high voltage transformer to control the output. And then just above the high voltage supply is where the original tubes were which were the rectifiers, and they've been replaced with solid state rectifier assemblies. In the back of the transmitter, you can see the RF output tank, the driver tank, some of the stuff involved with the modulator, the filament, and the low voltage and bias supplies. Turn on the filament breaker. The blower comes on, the filaments light up, and we'll get a reading on the filament voltage meter. Now that the filament's running, go ahead and close the door because there's a high voltage in the It will come on with the door open. Turn on the receiver. Turn on the main plate breaker, and then there's a controller over in this rack that actually controls the transmit standby function of the transmitter. That interrupts the plate contactor. So right now we're in standby and the transmitter's off. But when I want to go into transmit, I throw this switch. We'll hear the contactor pull in. The high voltage light comes on. You'll see we have plate voltage and plate current and the transmitter is running at about 400 watts. To stop transmitting, all we do is push the switch back down the standby, and now we're in receive. Control of the TR relay, the plate contactor for the transmitter, and receiver muting is all through the center panel. With one switch, the entire station is switched from receive to transmit. We'll go ahead and put the transmitter on the air. We'll see that we're getting a reading on the modulation monitor. What I'll do is move the camera down a little bit. For audio, there's an old Volumax, a Shure mixer, and a Shure microphone. If I go over and turn the microphone on, one, two, three, test, test, test. One, two, three. This is K3, KH. 1885 and testing. Although right now I'm hooked into the dummy load, so this isn't even going to an antenna. Located up inside the transmitter is a TR switch. The switch is the antenna to and from the transmitter between receive and transmit. We'll go ahead and switch it and transmit right now with the plate off. And you can hear the relay working. You don't really see much. The 1500 watt dummy load is very useful for doing all the tests on the transmitter before putting it on the air. Also, this dummy load has a sample port that's useful for feeding a spectrum analyzer for checking for harmonics and spurious. There's also a small 500 watt bidirectional power meter. 
which is currently reading about 425 watts. So this concludes the tour of my RCA VTA 1M. I've worked on this one for a little over a year to get to this point. I've had it on the air for about a year, and I've made many contacts on 160 meters. If you're interested in any additional information or more technical details on this project, you can look at my website at www.ka3eth.net.